everybody, Matthew Moore's MM Wood Studio, and in this video, we're gonna make three jigs for our bench that are gonna accessorize it and make using hand tools that much better. Let's get into it. The first jig we're gonna build for the bench is a T-stop. So let's say you got a piece of wood, you know, that's wide like this, this is six plus inches, and you want to do some hand work on it. Well, if you take this piece, you come over and grab one of your bench dogs, you put it into your dog hole, you bring your board up, and it's just got one point to stop it. That becomes a pivot point. Instead of coming in with your hand plane and being able to do work, you're gonna end up pivoting as you apply different forces against this piece. And so what this T-stop is gonna do is prevent that pivoting. So using a scrap from a previous project, I'm going to cut that piece so it's about two inches tall and about five inches long. And then I'm gonna rip a piece of half-inch plywood two inches thick so that it, plus the space over into the vise, is the width of my bench. So now over at my bench, I'm going to take the piece of hardwood and set it so it's the same height as this piece of plywood. And here, I can center my piece of plywood, throw a clamp over it, come in, drill a pilot hole, countersink it, and drive a screw in. You drop your T-square in, and you find where it's pretty much parallel to whatever you're using here. So I use a hold fast to keep it from pivoting. You can also grab a clamp and clap it to the edge of your bench. Lock down my vise, bring over my piece of wood, and I can start taking shavings. Now where this jig stops working is when something's less than this width, and this is you know, about two, two and a half inches. Now a piece like this, that let's say this is a leg for a piece of furniture you're making, it's long and it doesn't have a lot of width, so it's still gonna wanna pivot. Now this is long, wide enough that it won't wanna pivot. However, it's not thick enough to be used on something that's half an inch, right? A lot of our parts are three quarters of an inch or thicker, but sometimes they're less. And that's where this next jig is gonna come. Now I had one of these for years in California before I moved here to Atlanta, and for some reason it just didn't make it in the move. And now over the table saw, I'm gonna cut a piece of three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood, 34 inches long, and rip it to six inches wide. And then I'm gonna rip a piece of quarter inch quarter sawn white oak that I bought at the woodworking store to two inches wide. I'm then going to rough cut that strip just a little bit wider than six inches, then come back and cut it to six inches long. I take the two inch wide piece, put it at the ends. I take my long piece, butt it up to that, and then make a mark on the bottom of it. I bring that to the cross cut sled and cut it to length. And then I take that piece I just cut to length and rip it to an inch wide. I then get some glue on the bottom of my piece, line it up, and shoot a couple brads in to hold it nicely in place. Come back and clean up the squeeze out. Next, I put glue on my one inch wide piece, butt it up, and then I shoot some brads into it, lift it up, take the off cut, and use that as a clamping call. Now while this is drying, I'm going to use this piece that I'm gonna use with the cleat. The length really doesn't matter. It could be 12 inches, it could be the length of your vise, whatever makes sense. And lightly in pencil, give myself a rough width. See, I have a very light line here, I have my center line. And what I want to do is place screws along the length of this. Drilled and countersunk my holes and drove my screws in. And then once it's dry, you can open your vise, slide it in. If you need to bring something in that's a little bit on the thin side, you can definitely do that. With this at a quarter inch at the front, you can come on in and work this material. And last bench jig or accessory we're gonna make is a little bit more specialized. It's for a shooting plane. Now I'm gonna be using this kit from Lee Valley Veritas to build my shooting board. Now there's no replacement for measuring from reality as Timothy Rousseau says. So here I've got this 24 inch long track and I don't know if it's really 24 inches or not, but I'm gonna take my pencil here 
and draw a couple of lines and then draw the edge of the track. Now I'm gonna bring over a square and continue these lines. Now over the table saw, I'm gonna make a cross cut. After I make that cut, I bring a piece of half inch Baltic birch plywood over that I have marked to the rough length and I cut it just a little bit longer to relieve the piece I need and then I cross cut it again to length. And then I take a measurement for the width between the rail from Lee Valley and the remaining space and I rip the half inch piece of plywood. After lining up my plywood and my shooting board track, I clamp the three quarter inch plywood in the track down to my bench and drill my holes and connect the shooting board track to the three quarter inch plywood. I have this really beautiful piece of quarter sawn walnut right here. And as you can tell by the grain direction, it's quarter sawn. And I want the grain to be running like this, parallel to the board, so that it'll expand and contract mostly in the vertical. And where we want to put this in the board to be able to shoot pieces that are maybe four, five, six inches wide. I don't know what's gonna happen in the future. So I want enough room that this piece, this plane is supported all the way through the cut. So that's uh, five inches. And draw a very light pencil line. And I'm gonna write top. This way when I put this back together, I know which direction this piece should be going. Now to allow me to be able to compensate for change in wood movement. Now to do this, I have a piece of brass here that um, I was able to purchase from Rockler inside of this hanging mirror kit. And I'm using this to be a pivot point here at the end. A washer on the bottom, another washer on the top with this here, and of these four items and a slightly larger hole here, I'll be able to slightly maneuver this back and forth a little bit. The line I'm gonna draw is a inch and a quarter in from the edge, and I wanna find center, and sure enough, that's three quarters of an inch. Now on this edge, I want a little bit of clearance, so I'm gonna come in two inches and then mark center. Now this piece out of the way, the next question is how do we secure this top to the base? Now there's a lot of room here, there's a lot of width, not easy for clamps to get into. So what I wanna do instead is to use screws and glue and clamps to hold this down. While the base dried, I came over to the drill press and I used a bit that matches the same diameter as my piece of brass. I brought the piece back with my drill bit in the piece and just using my hammer with the piece lined up, I tapped down to mark exactly where I would need to drill. And then using my square, I brought that center point across, took a measurement for the hole at the farther end and transferred that to my line. After that, I hammered in my brass pin. I'm sticking out just a little bit here. And this distance here is where I need to drill next. And as you can see, I flagged that on my drill bit here. And now over at the drill press, you see me drilling that depth into the board itself. And then using a 3 8 inch bit, I drill a hole all the way through. And this is so I can get my quarter 20 threaded insert installed. Changed out my bit for a Forstner bit that is wider in dimension than the washer I'm gonna be using and drill the hole into my quarter sawn walnut where that 1020 screw will be coming through. And then I screw that insert in until it's flush with my plywood. With my 1020 screw coming up through the bottom, place it over the screw, line everything up with a little bit of brass that was coming out, grab my hammer and another piece of walnut so I could pound in the brass pin. Before I tighten all this down, I'm just gonna take my block plane and chamfer my edges a little bit. Now I put my washer over, take my star knob here, get everything lined up. And then I'm gonna use a feeler gauge to make sure that I'm in and I can't make contact or get underneath. And I'm gonna come in and draw a line two inches from the bottom. I'm gonna bring up a piece of plywood and roughly visually center it.
The next step in this process is to attach this formed rail. It acts kind of like a guide rail. Flipped upside down. We're gonna take one of my pieces here of this frictionless tape and I'm going to adhere it so it just touches the edge and then I'm gonna fold it gently over the edge and adhere it to the bottom of the rail as well. And there's just a little bit extra on each side. So I'm just gonna take my knife here and cut the extra off. Now I can place that down. I'm gonna use my knife to poke a hole into the tape over the screws. Take a washer and my pan head screw and screw this in, but you don't need to tighten it all the way yet. And now I'm gonna install the set screws, but I'm not gonna push the track out yet. I'm gonna take my shooting plane and set it in the center of the shooting board. I'm gonna grab a piece of paper here. It's about three thousandths of an inch. I'm gonna put it in between the edge of the shooting board and the edge of the inner wall. And now what I'm gonna do is adjust the guide until it's nice and flush with my plane. I'm gonna tighten it down. If I press it against this and I hold it to tight, so just work to get this perfect fit. And I think we're right there. Take your plane off and apply your other two pieces of UHMW tape, one to the inside edge and one just against the guide rail. And then you can bring over a piece and you can shoot the length. Look at those beautiful end grain shavings. Take your piece like this, and instead of shooting it, you can also edge joint it. And just like that, we've got three jigs here that are gonna help us at the bench. We have our T-square that's gonna help us with wider parts, such as panel glue-ups. And then we have a longer plane support that is great for parts like legs or things that aren't as wide, provide extra support for those. And then we have our shooting board right here. This is fantastic. This is gonna help you square up pieces, to bring parts down to the perfect length that you may need, such as when you're inserting a shelf into a dado. And uh, this is these three jigs here are gonna be really instrumental in getting everything out of your bench. Now, if any of you guys are already using jigs kind of like this, let me know. If you have any questions, let me know too. Put all that in the comments below. Now, as always, please subscribe to the channel share it with your friends and hit that thumbs up button if you like this video. If you're watching this on Facebook, hit the like button, share your timeline, and head over to the MM Lucio page and like us there as well. And as always, always, have a great week in your shop.